I avoid doing barbell exercises as much as possible. Reason being, I think barbells are the most overrated and overused implements out there. A lot of people claim they're an absolute must in people's training and that you're missing out on so much if you don't do them. I respectfully disagree. They are extremely convenient, and it's not to say that they're ineffective or that there aren't some very obvious exceptions, which I'll get to as well, but in general, if I can switch out a barbell exercise with another exercise, I will. And I advise this for the vast majority of people. Today, I'll share with you the reasons why, and I'll also show you some of my top variations for barbell exercises for upper and lower body. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on the matter, particularly after you've heard my reasons. Do you agree or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. I don't expect to be agreed with all the time, but I'd love to be able to get some open discussions going on this topic. This is also probably a really bad time to mention the new 12-week program that I've just launched on Gambaru. It's a barbell-only program. It's a hybrid body weight and barbell program utilizing a full body split that's designed to not only get you stronger and more muscular, but to improve your mastery over your entire body. Using only one implement like a barbell can have its limitations, which we'll be discussing today. But sometimes it's all you have available. So this program was my way of blending together a variety of different training modalities to give you the best possible training response with limited equipment and limited time. If you want to check it all out, I'll leave a link in the description and the pinned comments below and up here in the corner somewhere for you to check it out for free. When you sign up to any one of my programs, you get so much more than that one program. You get 20 programs, hundreds of workouts, and a complete training, diet, education, and coaching experience on my app, Gambaru Method. I'm not going to bang on about it much more here because I want to get into today's content. But seriously, go check it out. So the biggest reason why I don't do barbell exercises is they force your body into one strict plane of movement that isn't ideal for everybody, especially as you start to get stronger and spend more time in the gym. Take one of the most popular exercises, the barbell bench press. This forces your arm into this wider, more flared out position and it makes it more difficult to tuck your elbows into a stronger, more stable position where your muscles like your chest are in a better position to work. You still can tuck your elbows in, but since your hands are stuck on this straight line out here, tucking your elbows starts to put more rotational forces through your shoulders, elbows and wrists, which creates more joint strain. The same thing applies to fixed barbell rows, pull-ups and overhead presses. Now, joint strain isn't a bad thing. The human body is not fragile, it's incredibly resilient, and has the ability to recover and come back stronger from the stress we expose it to. The problem is, as you start accumulating more reps, sets and time spent training, you'll inevitably have to wind up using heavier weights and more volume in the gym just to make small marginal gains, or even to just maintain your physique. And that's where it becomes more difficult to keep your recovery high enough to balance out the amount of stress you have to put your body through to continue to progress. At that point, where the level of joint stress starts to overtake your recovery threshold, that's where you may start to experience all sorts of issues such as extra tightness and restrictions and potentially pain and injury. Everybody is different, so it's not a blanket rule that doing barbells are going to give you these issues. But from my experiences and conversations with much more experienced lifters and coaches, it's something they all tend to agree on. If you can switch out a barbell exercise for something else that will give you the same, if not more, benefits whilst preserving your joints, it's probably a good idea to do that. For upper body exercises, there is absolutely no reason why you can't switch out all of your barbell exercises for dumbbells, cables, machine or bodyweight exercises. People often demonize this and say you're going to miss out on the big, heavy compound movements that are so essential for getting bigger and stronger. But that's simply not the case. You're still doing compound movements and you're still able to use very heavy loads. While the total weight on the bar may be different, the actual stress you're putting on your muscles will be about the same because you're able to direct that weight more efficiently and effectively right where you want it without having to worry about your joints being in these awkward, uncomfortable positions. So that's upper body. What about lower body? We don't have the same problem of your feet being fixed to the bar the same way that your hands are fixed to a bar, so there's less of an issue around the ankle, knee or hip joint that we might see through the wrists, elbows and shoulders from the hands being fixed on a straight bar. And that's why I still do incorporate a lot more straight bar work for my lower body training, particularly on hinge variations like deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts and hip thrusts. I personally do a bit of barbell squatting too, although it's not something that I utilize a lot in my own training or recommend to others. I personally just rotate it in as a variation because it's a bit of fun. For lower body barbell exercises, I'm extremely mindful of a person's proportions and mobility. 
I personally have really good proportions and structures that allow me to squat effectively with a barbell whilst maintaining an upright torso and a straight back. A lot of people don't have this structure and it's pretty much impossible for them to get into similar positions to me regardless of how mobile they are. This leads to the lower back being loaded up a lot more. Now, if that's part of your goals, then hey, that's awesome. But for many people, this starts to get in the way of their lower body training and their lower back fatigues well before their legs really get challenged. These people could get just as much, if not more, out of their legs while still training their lower back a decent amount as well by simply switching out to more effective variations. For lower body, I much prefer to use unilateral exercises, dumbbell exercises, machine exercises, and specialty bars like the trap bar, as they allow you to generate much more force through your body and direct it towards your goals, and they're all a lot more customizable to each person's unique structure. This means you can lift more weights more frequently and get more from your training without it impacting on your recovery as much. The biggest principle we have to keep in mind for any of this is with any goal, strength, muscle building, athletic performance, or mobility, the only thing we really care about is exposing your body to stress. It doesn't matter if that stress is in the form of a barbell, dumbbell, cable, machine, or body weights, your body will receive it as stress. That stress can be targeted to where you want it to give you the best result possible, or it can be targeted less appropriately to the one spot and give you a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Now, there are, of course, some exceptions to avoiding barbell exercises. First of all is the most obvious, convenience and preference. A lot of people training at home or in gyms with limited equipment availabilities might struggle to find all the alternatives to train effectively without having to incorporate some barbell exercises. Many people just have a barbell and rack at home, no dumbbells or cables. Barbell training can also be a lot of fun, and I personally get that. I love to do squat, bench, and dead, maybe because I grew up on these exercises. But to me, they're just a whole lot of fun, and I enjoy doing them from time to time. That's a big reason why I created the Barbell Only program, because it intelligently balances out the barbell work with bodyweight exercises, so you can still get the benefits of the barbell, but balance out any of the potential drawbacks, allowing you to increase the overall stress on your body through the extra bodyweight exercises. The other obvious exception is powerlifters or any specific barbell athlete who has to use a barbell as part of their sport. For these people, they obviously should be doing a lot of barbell work in their training as there is a huge skill component to practicing the lifts at peak weights. But even still, many of the top elite level powerlifters I've worked with will agree that there is a cost to barbell training and they do as much as they can feasibly to balance it out through intelligent programming and the utilization of accessory exercises. So what do you think? If you started out thinking that barbells are a must in everybody's training, are you reconsidering things? Maybe you're even more staunchly for this argument and against it that I say Bible's overrated. I'm fine either way. Drop me a comment below and let me know and let's have an open discussion about it. And if you have any other questions or comments, please drop them below and I'll see you all next time.